Okay, so <clears throat> welcome back. In the next part here, we're going to take a look at uh, <clears throat> a few things. Um, one is uh, adding some images to the page here, and also then uh, taking a closer look at the head section of the document and metadata. So um, first, we'll take a look at an image. So we'll, uh, you know, uh, this uh, article obviously could use a little bit of eye candy. So that's great. So right after the H2, um, but before the paragraph element, I'm going to add another uh, element that is uh, kind of like the meta element above here in the sense that the image element uh, 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 is a, an empty element. So the image element is IMG. We add a space. And then we have to add two attributes. One is the source attribute, SRC, is equal to. And then we add a quotes. You can use single quotes or double quotes. Just be consistent. And, and we're going to add... Uh, base, if we look at the files here, we want to add um, this picture of a rail car here. Uh, so this is from, this is the uh, page we're in the index here. So from here, we would navigate through the images folder and we want to pull up the Pullman sleeping car.jpg. So we say here, uh, the path from the index page is the images folder, right leaning slash Pullman dash sleep car.jpg. So check that this path here is indeed spelled correctly and it's uh, it, it references that uh, piece of media. The second, uh, uh, the image element requires a second attribute which is the alternate text version and we'll say um, in this case uh, sleeping car. And then we close out. I prefer the XML style where I include the end of character and the space inside the tag, but that is an, uh, uh, there we have our image element uh, inside the, with two attributes, the source and the alt. So let's uh, save that, file save, and we'll reload the page in the browser with the refresh button. And we should see the image now uh, embedded, well, included in the page. That's not embedded technically. So, um, that's terrific. So let's uh, now we're going to turn our attention up toward the head section here, uh, where this is generally speaking, um, there is nothing. All of the visible content on the page is, is contained within the body tag, so inside the body element. Uh, the head section is basically reserved for what we call metadata, or so information about this resource. So you know, um, so uh, first uh, and and. Arguably, the most one of the most important elements in here is uh, our meta tag for character encoding. Because as soon as the browser uh, reads this, when it's parsing the file to render it in the browser, um, it, it will hit this. And if it has made any other assumptions about what character set to use, it will hit this and say, "Oh, Unicode, eight bit." Okay, and we'll start rendering the page again. So this needs to be uh, first or second, certainly in the head section. The next thing we need is the uh, title element and this is very important certainly for search uh, for search visibility um, so we need to have a well-crafted uh, title um, now this should begin with the the, uh, the name of or the uh, basically the, it should describe the content of the page so I'll copy the name of the article here from my subheading and I'll paste it in here And then I'll uh, add a space and add some sort of separator. I like the pipe character. We hold down shift and hit the, the key. It's probably above your enter or return key. It's like a vertical line. Add another space. And then I will put the, uh, the name of the sponsor or the organization that owns this uh, resource. Right? This is the Ottawa Evening Citizen. So the title typically will have two pieces of information. One is something about the content that is featured in the in the body, and then the company or piece of software or application name uh, afterwards uh, there. So that's a uh, the titles don't need to be terribly long, but they should be at least descriptive. And if I save this page, file save, uh, you'll see um, uh, the title won't be rendered here. Um, not in certainly not in the in the document window, but if I refresh the page. You will notice that the on on some 
uh, user agent, the, if it's a tab browsing environment, you'll, you'll get that <clears throat> title content will be rendered in the tab. And if you mouse over that tab, and it, the, the, the content doesn't fit the tab, you'll get a tooltip which renders the whole thing. Search engines really love well-written uh, uh, title elements. So that's great. So the, the next thing I want to add is another piece of uh, uh, metadata inside the head section. So we've got our character encoding and our title. We'll add another meta tag. So a meta, a meta tag is really a generic tag, and it gets its meaning from the attributes that we add to it. In this case, we want to add the name attribute, and we're going to say the name of this meta tag is an author meta tag. So we're going to uh, add name equal author as the first attribute value pair. The second one is then the content of this element, and then we're going to um, we're going to say, okay, well, this is from the uh, this actually came from um, was a syndicated piece of content. Uh, from the Associated Press Dispatch, and that's, believe it or not, how they spelled it uh, back in 1820. So, um, and then we'll close out the meta tag. So that um, that is helpful for things like search engines to know who who wrote this article, right, or who provided this article. So that's the meta author tag. The next one is the meta. Uh, name equal description and the description tag is, is just that it gives kind of a short kind of uh, blurb about uh, or a kind of a synopsis of the article and we'll say uh, premier Lloyd George George um, calls for a fair increase on the rail railways uh, did I misspelled accommodate I'm not sure there's two M's or not to accommodate um, uh, increased costs of operation And that's the end of the meta description. So, uh, and this uh, oftentimes, um, uh, when you pull up a, uh, when you pull up, you, you do a search, um, the kind of, uh, not the, the paid search or, or the ads section, but the, what we call the organic results will often include uh, this content um, to describe what the page in, entails. So this is quite helpful for usability when, when, with respect to search. There is a, a, another meta tag called meta name equal keywords. Um, that's kind of fallen into uh, disuse um, uh, and discredit really because the search engine they, they were abused and people would put uh, search keywords in here because it was never these keywords were never visible to the end user uh, the search engines began to disregard them as people abused this kind of privilege so meta name equal keywords aren't uh, really uh, aren't really um, uh, used too very often anymore that's great. So uh, another thing we, we can put inside the head section <coughs> is oftentimes, uh, I'll save that, you'll see, you'll see this doesn't do anything visible to the page, but it certainly does improve uh, what we call the searchability or uh, findability of the page, certainly, um, and that usefulness. So uh, the next one is uh, very often if someone wants to add this to a bookmark, so they click, they'll try and bookmark the page, right? Uh, um, that's fine. Um, there's a, you'll see there's a little icon up here in the tab here. This is kind of the favorites icon. So if it's, if it's bookmarked, this little icon will help people visually recognize this. So I've uh, uh, created kind of a, um, uh, what's called a favorites icon. It's often called, these files are often called favicon.png favicon or dot, uh, .gif or dot, uh, .ico for icon file format. Um, so I'll click on that. It's just a little kind of an O for the Ottawa um, uh, the Ottawa citizen. Uh, I just kind of put that together in Photoshop. Uh, it generally, it's a 16 by 16 pixel or a 32 by 32 is a square. Um, and how we use this for that uh, favorites icon up here is, uh, is we put a, um, a link uh, 
element. So it looks like kind of like this. So right after we'll say link. And the link uh, tag is used for a number of different purposes. One of them is for the favorites icon that we do this with uh, rel equal. And then we say short cut space icon. And uh, then we say uh, href or hypertext reference is equal to, and then we put the path, much like we do with the images image here, we put the path to the favorites icon here. So we'd say, um, let's say uh, uh, images slash fav icon dot png, uh, like so. Um, the, the last, there's a third um, type, uh, a third attribute and value we add to the link tag for this shortcut icon and that's called the type and this is where we define the mime type of the file and then we say um, type equal image slash and we say x dash icon and we close out the link element which will uh, provide for a, sh a favorites icon or a bookmark icon so uh, we'll save this page file save and when I re pay attention to the top of the tab here, when I reload, and that should now appear as such. So when you hit uh, add this to favorites, uh, it will appear in your favorites list. Um, so that's that's great. So um, and the uh, the last uh, the last piece. I mean, there's 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 many different pieces of metadata that we can include in the head section. These are perhaps just the most uh, the most common. Um, uh, we're going to add another link element and this time we're going to use a link element to add some visual styles to the page so much like uh, so in our you'll notice in the files that I've, I've provided for you inside the CSS um, folder there's a file called styles.css so this contains a few visual style rules to add a little bit of kind of visual presentation to the page it looks kind of a little bit unstyled so we're going to say link and this time the rel attribute for the style sheet, the rel, it stands for relationship. In this case, it is for a style sheet. And then the uh, href, in this case, is in the CSS folder over here. So from referencing from here, we look in the CSS folder and we grab the file called styles.css. <clears throat> We can close that out. Those are the only two attributes we really need. You could have the media attribute. We'll talk about that later in the course. Um, but that will do for now. We'll go file, save, and we'll reload the page. And this will add, you know, apply a, a kind of a nicer font treatment. It will add some uh, kind of a width, give the page a nice kind of column width, and uh, kind of uh, give, give it a little bit more polish in its presentation, but boost up the, the font size. Um, so that's great. Um, that's terrific. And uh, I'll show you what the styles does. So here, the, uh, we talked about uh, comments, for example, in HTML, uh, looking like with uh, using these delimiters here. Um, CSS uh, can have its own styles with the slash star, star slash. Um, this is what character encoding looks like in CSS. Uh, so it basically provides the same function as the meta uh, car set equal UTF-8. Um, we we'll use an at car set rule and put UTF-8 in the in quotes and a semicolon at the end line. And then this, this is just a body selector that applies to the body of the page and to everything inside it, changes the font, uh, boosts up the font size, increases the line height, which is the, in typography, it's called the letting, so the, the space between the lines vertically adds a width to the page so that, and, and sets the margin left and right to automatic, effectively centering the page. So I won't get too much into those styles other than uh, the fact that we know now um, link elements that point to visual styles, which are written in CSS, are added to the head section as part of the metadata. Uh, <clears throat> so that's great. So the, the, the last bit um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about is here. Let's. Uh, turn our attention down to the bottom of the page and we have um, we have a couple of um, a couple of paragraphs here um, so after our tertiary headings for English railways and Scottish railways we have a couple of basically these are lists so we you know in this case railways affected by this fare increase in England include the 
uh, Eastern Counties Railway, Midland and Great Northern uh, Joint Railway, Great Western, so on and so on and so forth. So um, we can use other structures and, you know, this, uh, say we wanted to list these in kind of a bulleted list kind of scenario. Uh, what I can do is I include the, I can close out my paragraph right here. Maybe put a colon there. Um, and then, of course, I don't want the end of, don't need this tag here. Uh, and then I can add something called an unordered list. So I can uh, put in a UL. So the UL is an unordered list. And this is kind of a compound element. So it has a uh, start and an end tag. And then each list item, each element in this is uh, surrounds by another set of tags called list items, LIs. So I can now, uh, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six railways. So what I'll do is I'll copy this code and I will move each of these railways into their respective list item. Don't need these any longer for those. And so now I've got a, an unordered list. Notice I've tabbed each of these list items inside because these are children of the unordered list. Once I finish the complete list, I close out the unordered list element, and there is our list. So we have a paragraph uh, which precedes this list. So I'll take a look, file save, and I'll reload the page. And you can see here. Now this is organized in a list item or in a bulleted list uh, scenario here. That's great. So maybe I'll leave it to you to uh, uh, organize the Scottish railways in a similar fashion here to the uh, English railways.